Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we're going to look at how HTMX makes it easy to build a simple CRUD application. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. Hey guys, I wanna give a quick introduction to HTMX today. Now, let me start off by saying HTMX is not HTML. So if you found this tutorial because Google thought you meant to say HTML, that's not right. So if you're also just starting out with HTML, this tutorial isn't for you. This tutorial is for people that already know HTML because HTMX is built on that foundation. And also it's a JavaScript library. So it's going to help if you know a little bit of JavaScript, although HTMX approaches things entirely differently. So let's take a look at HTMX. So before I pull up VS Code, notice I'm on htmx.org. Let's go to the docs and here we can click installing. And I just want to point out that I'm going to use a CDN and pull in the HTMX library into our HTML page. However, if you're going to deploy an app in production, they recommend you actually download a copy like you see here on the page. So there's instructions here in the docs. Now let's go to VS Code. Okay, I'm in VS Code now and I've got my index.html open. And this is a simple to do CRUD application. CRUD meaning create, read, update, and delete. And anytime I'm learning something new, that's the type of application I like to create because it walks me through all of those HTTP actions that I would normally take. And that is reading all of the to-dos, creating a new to-do, updating existing to-dos, and possibly deleting to-dos. So now you can see here in the head section, I am pulling in that HTMX library as the docs indicated. So now let's just look at the rest of the page. And it's like the simplest to do uh, application that I've ever created. And that's because this is all there is to it. And this is the strength of HTMX and why people like it. Now, HTMX does require a server. So it's offloading a little bit of that complexity to the back end. And you may or may not be familiar with back end development. And if you're not, I suggest you check out my Node.js course that I have on my YouTube channel. And from there, you'll learn how to create a back end that would interact with HTMX or any other type of JavaScript library or framework you might be creating an application with. I'm going to show you a little bit of what I'm using today. It is Node.js, but it's something different as well. But first, let's look here at the front end. And you can see I've got a form, and this form has an HX post attribute. Now that is unique to HTMX, and it is saying, post this form data to this address. And after that, it also has HX target. That's something else that is unique to HTMX. And that says target what you receive after submitting this form. Whatever you receive, target this element here. And notice this has the ID of to-do list. And that is what the target is set to. So when we get something back after submitting this form, we want to put it inside of this element. Notice it's an ordered list, but also notice that there's no list items here right now. That's because you need your server to send HTML, not JSON data, but HTMX expects to receive HTML. So whatever it receives, whatever type of HTML, it's going to go inside of this ordered list. So as you might expect, I'm going to have my backend server send list items, those list item elements, the LI, as a response after I submit a new to-do. Also notice here, the ordered list itself has an HX get, so it sends a get request to this same URL, but this is a get request, not a post request. And from here, it's also triggered by the load event. So notice this HX trigger attribute, and it says when the page loads, trigger this get request, it's going to get that same HTML payload here and put it inside of this ordered list. And that's all we have in our page. So we've got a get method and a post method, and we have the target where the HTML will show up. We also have a trigger for when the page loads. But what about the put method that we would use to update our to-dos with and the delete method? Well, that needs to be 
in the list item elements themselves. And we can only see that by looking at the back end because the back end is what sends this HTML. So let's take a look at that. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. You may be surprised to learn that three out of every four viewers, nearly 75% of all people who watch my channel aren't subscribed. So I just wanted to take a quick second and remind you to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And if you really like my videos, you can get exclusive content and support my channel even more by joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. Thanks for your consideration. And now back to the video. So I have a simple Node.js server set up and I'm using a Hono for this. Now I'll quickly show you that web page as well. Hono quickly allows you to set up a backend server and I might do a separate video on that as well. So let me know in the comments if you want to see that. But now I'm just going to quickly go over what HTML is created on the back end and how it is sent to our HTMX. So notice here I've got a helper function called get list items. Now this helper function creates HTML and notice here I've got an input and then I've also got a label and a button. So this is for our update and delete actions. It also lists out the list item. So this input is a checkbox. That's what we're going to do if we check off a to-do item and it's going to update that item. But notice here is the HX put inside of the list item. So that is the put request. It has a trigger, so it's listening for the click event. And after that, it's also got the same target back to the to-do list. So as one of the to-dos are checked, whether it's completed or not, then it will once again put in that request and update the to-do item and then send back that HTML that we have with the get list items function. Now here is our label as well. And then here is a button for deleting the to-do item. Notice it is HX delete. So that goes along with that method. So we've covered all the methods now. We've got our read method, which would be the HX get. We've got our create method, which is the HX post. Update, which is HX put. And delete, which is HX delete. This is also triggered by a click. And the target, once again, is still the to-do list, where we want to see all of the to-dos listed out after they are updated, deleted, whatever happens to them. So this is the helper function, and I'm just using it inside of each of the methods to get the list items to send back as HTML we see here. So let's quickly look at just one of the endpoints here in the back end. Here is the delete endpoint. It receives the to-do ID. It takes care of all of those things with the data. Then we get the list items and you can see I am just returning HTML. Now if this looks a little bit different than you're used to seeing in a Node.js server, once again it's because I'm using Hono. Let me quickly show you that web page so you can look it up and remember to let me know in the comments if you want to see a video about using Hono as well. So you can find Hono at Hono.dev and it lets you set up a back-end server very quickly. Now, you don't have to use Hono though, and this video isn't about that. I'm just saying HTMX needs some type of backend server. You could easily use Node.js and Express if that's what you're familiar with, and that's what you want to use going forward. And there's other backends you could also use. So I'm just saying that's what I'm using in this tutorial. Check it out if you'd like, and maybe I'll make a video about that. But here, back to HTMX itself, it's just the easiest way to create a simple application. I have found nothing else that lets me put so so little, I should say, in the one file. And let me pull that back up. My one file for my to-do list here is the index.html. Now the downside is it's fairly well tied to your back end. Notice I was creating some of that front end HTML because HTMX expects to receive HTML. So I was creating some of that in the back end and you may not like that. You may not like those being so tightly coupled, and that's the one downside I see, but overall, very easy to make simple apps with HTMX. Okay, all of that said, let's go ahead and start up the application. Now I'm going to provide this code in the description, and note it's a mono repo, so you wanna run your back end in one instance of VS Code and your front end in another. So here we'll open up the back end first, and then notice I am also inside of the my app directory here, at least the way I have this. What, whatever directory I end up putting in the repository, you'll want to open that up and then type npm run dev 
This will start your back end and notice it's on port 3000. So the front end code that I had here with HTMX, notice it's targeting localhost 3000 and going to this to do endpoint as expected. So you shouldn't have to change that. You can start the HTMX project just like you would an HTML project. Just click go live if you have live server installed. And I do recommend that live server extension for VS Code if you don't have it. It's going to click go live and it will launch it as if it's on a server. And notice I didn't add any CSS to this at all. I was just interested in the functionality of it. And this starts out with three basic to-do items. So we can add a new to-do and I'll say, hey, press submit or press enter for submit. And it quickly adds the new to-do. We can update it and just like that, we see the updated to-do list with the check mark or we can delete this to do as well. So it works just like you would expect something that you've created with vanilla JavaScript or React, but it's just so simple on the front end. HTMX is very nice for these things. And of course you do need that separate back end to interact with, but it needs to send HTML, not JSON. That's the key. Hey guys, I just started a Patreon and I'm already giving a shout out to Eldad. He's my first patron at the senior tier and that means he gets shown in the credits at the end of each video. Remember, you can get my exclusive content and early release content at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.